I know what you're thinking. Could the wet bandits actually survive the sheer scale of incoming trauma? Good question. Well, we consulted our medical team to find out what would happen if they really fell victim to Kevin's brutal traps. Bear in mind that these two burglars weren't in the first flush of youth. Even a young person, you could sustain really severe injuries. You could break your neck. You could end up a paraplegic, tetraplegic, not able to move from one of those falls. <laughs> It's impossible not to wince and guffaw at this classic pratfall as hapless Harry exaggeratedly tumbles down the deliberately iced up stone steps. <laughs> oh, blimey. If they got away with no spinal cord injury uh, from that fall, uh, they'd, they'd, they'd be very, very lucky. At, at the least, they'd have multiple fractured ribs, perhaps even a punctured lung. These repeated falls, the chances are you would have broken several bones. The nail on the steps, I mean, that is everyone's fear, right? That is, that's like this kind of Hitchcockian psychological fear. The nail, which we kind of assume is a rusty nail, this, this is a deep infection in the foot waiting to happen. A nail that goes through your foot, you know, really that deep, again, can do damage to nerves and tendons. This, you could be potentially looking at a foot amputation. One of Kevin's traps is lifted straight from the insane frames of a Looney Tunes tune. The joy of the super hot doorknob is that it's horribly real and hilariously preposterous. And you've got to hand it to Joe. He milks it to the max. <laughs> he would have a severe contact burn. That would go full thickness through the skin. Chances are he'd have nerve damage, muscle damage, tendon damage. Putting it in the snow would not be enough. He'd need to go and see a plastic surgeon and a hand surgeon to fix that. My favourite, perhaps, comes early on when Marv pulls a, what he thinks is a light switch and from high up above, down the dumb waiter, falls an iron that lands flat on his forehead and leaves the mark of an iron. I mean, talk about Tom and Jerry. I think an iron coming down to shoot at that speed and velocity and hitting you right bang in the middle of the face, the first thing it's going to do is break your nose. The sheer force of it could well cause bleeding, a fracture of the forehead or bleeding behind the skull, between the skull and the brain, a subdural hemorrhage, which can cause br brain damage. <laughs> But the danger was also a living one. Arachnophobes, look away now. Home Alone has a sequence which, as well as being endlessly replayed, never fails to make your skin crawl. And yes, the little blighter is real. Now, if you can believe it, it was a real tarantula. That, to me, is giving everything for your art. Anything that startles the spider, a scream, a sudden movement, uh, it, its inclination will be to bite down on whatever it is it is doing that. Stern said he would do it if they only took one take. So there are two stories about this. One is that tarantulas are deaf, so that Stern did actually scream in that scene and the tarantula remained completely unmoved by that. Another is that he mimed the scream because he was so worried about scaring the tarantula that it would then bite him. But it's Kevin's perfectly staged and immaculately executed pièce de résistance that floors the wet bandits. Slapstick justice doing exactly what it says on the tin of paint. This was one of the most dangerous injuries. This one is potentially fatal. The fractured skull could damage the lining of the brain, the top of the brain. You could have a bleed on the brain. All of that is, is, is really, really serious. This is something that Hughes and Columbus never forget. 
it's funny. If it was purely sadistic or purely malevolent, it would be uncomfortable. But it works so well because, first and foremost, it's funny. Don't worry, Marv, I'll get him for you! Sorry!